In the name of Allah, the most merciful, and the most beneficial. In some interview, Sam Harris, an American philosopher, stated that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a war lord. Let us listen to what he stated. The recording will start in three seconds. He was not a hippie who got crucified. He was not a, um, a meditator, who, an ascetic who sat cross-legged under a Bodhi tree. Uh, he was a, a warlord who did many of the things. End of recording. As can be understood from the recording, Sam Harris stated that, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a war lord, and he did many other things. The same narrative was stated by, Jordan Peterson, a Canadian professor of psychology. Let us directly listen to the statement of, Jordan Peterson himself. The recording will be playing in three seconds. Muhammad was a warlord. And I, I don't know what to do about that fact. End of recording. As can be clearly understood from the recording, Jordan Peterson says, Muhammad was a warlord. Jordan Peterson also says, that is a fact. The big question is, is that really a fact? Peace be upon those who follow the guidance. In this episode, we are going to discuss, whether or not, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a war lord. This statement was expressed by, Sam Harris, and Jordan Peterson, in some occasion. As far as the conclusion is concerned, the answer is a big no. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a not war lord. However, the answer will be discussed throughout this video, using historical evidences. Subscribe to this channel. The channel of self-education, and self-rehabilitation, according to the teaching of Islam. As far as the conclusion is concerned, the answer is a no. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a not war lord. The objective of this explanation is, to protect Muslims from, falling into a deviant belief that, their beloved Prophet was a war lord, which is not true at all. Without further ado, let us get into the video. Please do not forget to push the subscribe button. The big question is, is that really a fact? Of course, that is not a fact. That is a lie. A very destructive lie. Judging by definition, that statement is false. First, let us examine the contemporary definition of warlord. A warlord is defined as a leader able to exercise military, economic, and political control over a subnational territory within a sovereign state due to their ability to mobilize loyal armed forces. Here, please notice the phrase a subnational territory within a sovereign state. It can easily be understood from this phrase that, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a not warlord. This is due to the fact that, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the leader of a sovereign state. That was the city-state of Medina. On the contrary, a warlord is, the leader of a sub-national territory, which does not possess any sovereignty. The city-state of Medina, had its own constitution, and territory. This will be discussed throughout the video. The Islamic city-state of Medina was located in the Arabian Peninsula, modern-day Saudi Arabia. In this picture, the city of Medina was shown as the blue dot. The city of Mecca was shown as the red dot. The distance between them are around 500 kilometers. Later on, the city of Mecca and Medina became the first and the second most sacred places 
in the religion of Islam. This is the territory of the city-state of Medina. The Mosque of Medina is located in the center of the city. The Mosque of Medina is the place where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, managed the governmental affairs. The Islamic city-state of Medina was established by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right after he emigrated from the Mecca city to Medina city at the year of 622 AD. The city-state of Medina was established based on a constitution. The constitution was called the Constitution of Medina or the Chapter of Medina. The Constitution of Medina was made by Prophet Muhammad himself, peace be upon him. Look at this picture. This picture is believed by historians as the exact copy of the Constitution of Medina. This is the foundation of the Islamic city-state of Medina. This was stipulated by Prophet Muhammad himself, peace be upon him. The constitution of Medina had 47 clauses. It was agreed by the surrounding Arab tribes as well as Jewish tribes. The constitution of Medina defined the authority of the Islamic city-state of Medina as well as the authority its neighboring Arab and Jewish tribes regardless of their religions. At the day even today, not all Arabs were Muslims. The contents of the Medinan constitution are still openly available, even until these days. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a warlord. He was a statesman. He was the head of the sovereign state. He stipulated the state's constitution. A warlord does not any capacity, to stipulate constitution. The year when the constitution of Medina was stipulated became the first year of the Islamic lunar calendar which is also known as the Hijri calendar. In Arabic the term Hijri linguistically means emigration. This is because the year when the constitution was stipulated was also the same year when the Prophet emigrated from the Mecca city to Medina city. This was the first constitution in the world. Even the surrounding superpowers, which existed in the same era, such as the Eastern Roman Empire and the Persian Empire, did not have any constitution. They were an absolute monarchy. The Magna Charta, which was the first constitution of the Western world, was stipulated in the 13th century. That was around 600 years after the constitution of Medina. Therefore, it is important to notice that, the Islamic city-state of Medina, was a sovereign state. The city-state of Medina, had its own constitution, and territory. The state of Medina, was not a part of any larger state. The state of Medina, was an independent state. The state of Medina, did not pay tribute to any other state. The state of Medina, was a small state. It was a city-state. But, it was a sovereign state, nonetheless. Summary Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a warlord. He was a statesman. He was the head of a sovereign state. That is, the Islamic city-state of Medina. The Islamic city-state of Medina, had its own territory, and constitution. Survival of one nation. First, let us see the geopolitical situation surrounding the event. In the picture, the Islamic city-state of Medina was represented as the red dot within the Arabian Peninsula. When the state of Medina was established, the world was dominated by two superpowers. They are the Eastern Roman Empire and the Persian Empire, which are represented by area in purple and yellow, respectively. Both of the two superpowers had their vessel states surrounding the Arabian Peninsula. However, initially, 
such superpower did not pose any threat to the Islamic city-state of Medina. The initial military threat to Medina came from the city of Mecca. The city of Mecca was the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the city where he was raised. Later on, when the Prophet reached the age of fifties, he and his companions emigrated to the city of Medina. During that time, the city of Mecca was a materialistic and a polytheistic society. The morality of the majority of the population was degraded. Human rights were violated on daily basis. It was very difficult for Islam, as a monotheistic religion, to flourish in the city of Mecca. Thus, the state of Islam was established in the city of Medina instead of Mecca. However, the establishment of the Islamic city-state of Medina posed a serious threat to the continuation of the materialistic and polytheistic society of Mecca. One year after the stipulation of the constitution of Medina, the armed force of the Meccans marched toward Medina to obliterate the newly born Islamic state at once. The first battle, fought by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the Battle of Badar. It was named after the location of the battle, which is the Valley of Badar. The Valley of Badar was located around 150 kilometers from Medina. It was also the primary route to the city of Medina. Despite being outnumbered three to one, Prophet Muhammad was victorious in this battle. That was the first major battle fought by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, against the force from the city of Mecca. After the first battle, which is the Battle of Badar, the city of Mecca launched its second and its third military attacks to the Islamic city-state of Medina. The second Meccan attack was the Battle of Mount Oahud. It was fought at the mountain of Oahud, located only eight kilometers from the central of Mecca city. The Muslims were heavily outnumbered, nine to one. This battle was fought three years after the stipulation of the constitution of Medina. By the protection of Allah, the Meccans did not succeed also in their second attack. The third Meccan attack was the Battle of Trench. This was actually the besiegement of the Medina city conducted by the Meccans. This battle was fought five years after the stipulation of the constitution of Medina. By the protection of Allah, the Meccans did not succeed also in their third attack. Eventually, the Meccans' third attacks on the city-state of Medina became their last one. Although, there are several tribal nations which were hostile toward the Islamic city-state of Medina. The main adversary of the Medina city was the city of Mecca. This is because the mosque of Kaaba is located in the city of Mecca. Kaaba is the place where the ritual of pilgrimage is annually performed. Kaaba is also the direction every Muslim on earth should face when performing daily prayer. However, during the time being a polytheistic society, the people of Mecca used to place statues and idols inside the mosque of Kaaba. They also used to perform polytheistic rituals inside the mosque of Kaaba. One of main missions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was to liberate the Kaaba from such polytheistic practice through a series of military campaign if it was necessary. This was the instruction from Allah, the creator of the universe. This will be discussed in the next slides. As the leader of a sovereign state, which is the Islamic city-state of Medina, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, launched two military endeavors against his main adversary, which is the city of Mecca. Those military endeavors are the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and the Conquest of Mecca. Hudaybiyah is the name of a place located only five kilometers from Kaaba, the city central of Mecca. After these two military endeavors, the city of Mecca was finally liberated 
from any form of polytheism. These two military endeavors, was won by the Prophet, peacefully, without any bloodshed. The Preservation of Human Right, Through, Military Endeavors As the leader of a sovereign state, which is the Islamic city-state of Medina, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, launched military campaigns, against hostile tribal nations, within the Arabian Peninsula, and beyond. Some of the military campaigns, were led by the Prophet himself, such as military endeavors against the Meccan. Some of the military campaigns, were not attended by the Prophet himself, but, were led by, military commanders, who were appointed by the Prophet, instead. For example, this can be observed, in the case of the Battle of Mutar. The Battle of Mutar, was the battle between, the Islamic city-state of Medina, and the Eastern Roman Empire. The battle was not led by Prophet Muhammad himself, peace be upon him. But rather, the Muslim army was led by, four companions of the Prophet, may Allah be pleased with them, who were appointed by the Prophet. During this campaign, the Prophet stayed in the city of Medina, managing the governmental affairs. The reason why, Prophet Muhammad launched such military campaigns, was not to force people into, embracing the religion of Islam. Because, it is prohibited in Islam, to do so. There is no compulsion acceptance the religion of Islam. This was stated in the Quran chapter 2 verse 256. The Quranic verse stated as follows. Quote, there shall be no compulsion in acceptance of the religion. The right course has become clear from the wrong. End quote. The same narration can also be found in the Quran chapter 109 verse 1 and 6. The Quranic verse is stated as follows. Quote, Say, O Muhammad, O you who have disbelieved, for you is your religion, and, for me is my religion. End quote. The reason why military campaigns need to be conducted, is to give the people, the right to choose whether or not, to embrace the religion of Islam, and the law of Islam. This can be observed from, the three following verses of the Quran. The first verse is verse, 185, from chapter, 2, of the Quran. The Quranic verse, stated as follows. Quote. The Quran, as guidance for all mankind. End quote. The second verse is, verse, 19, from chapter, 3, of the Quran. The Quranic verse, stated as follows. Quote, Surely, the only religion in sight of Allah is, Islam. End quote. The third verse is, verse, 40, chapter, 12, of the Quran. The Quranic verse, stated as follows. Quote, Legislation is only from Allah. End quote. Therefore, from the aforementioned three Quranic verses, the following can be understood. 1. The Quran is the best guidance, for all humankind. 2. The religion of Islam is the best religion, for all humankind. 3. The Islamic law is the most appropriate, for all humankind. 4. All humankind have the rights, to get access to all of these. 5. Impeding humankind, to gain access to Islam, is a violation against human rights. In fact, Allah the creator of this universe, has instructed Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to conduct military campaigns, in order that, all humankind have the rights to get access to, the religion of Islam and the law of Islam. This is due to the fact that, impeding humankind to gain access to Islam, is a violation of human rights. This can be understood from the Quran, chapter, 9, verse, 29. 
The Quranic verse stated as follows. Quote, Fight those who do not believe in Allah, or in the last day and, who do not consider unlawful, what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful, and, who do not adopt the religion of truth, from those who were given the scripture. Fight until they give the jizya willingly, while they are humbled. End quote. Although, Allah, the creator of this universe, has instructed Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to conduct military campaigns, Allah still gives the people, the liberty to refuse Islam, as long as, they are willingly to pay jizya. The question is, what is jizya? Linguistically, jizya means, reward or, compensation for a service. Here, jizya can be understood as annual fee, paid by the non-Muslims, who live under the protection of, the military force of the Muslims. In the religion of Islam, conducting military service for the state of Islam is, a part of religious duties. Non-Muslims are exempt from such military service, for the Islamic State. This is due to the fact that, there are no compulsion upon the non-Muslims, for such religious duty. The non-Muslims will live safely, from their enemies, under the protection of, the military force of the Muslims. Consequently, the non-Muslims have the obligation to pay the jizya, or annual fee for such military service. Not all non-Muslims have the obligation to pay jizya, only able adult men, among them. Women, children, slaves, and elderlies are exempt. This is due to the fact that, women, children, and elderlies, do not have any obligation, to conduct military service. In the religion of Islam, participating in a military endeavor, is a religious duty. This will not imposed, to the non-Muslims. Islam also possesses its special rule, regarding the military engagement. Those are as follows. It is forbidden to kill non-combatants. It is forbidden to kill women, elderlies and children. It is forbidden to chop down any tree, for no apparent reason. Prisons or mass incarceration are forbidden also. Real estate ownership must be honored. On top of the exemption of military service, by paying the jizya, the non-Muslim community have the autonomy, to practice their own laws. Non-Muslims are allowed, to practice their own religions. This can be observed from, the case of Jewish community, in the Arabia Peninsula. The Jewish living there, had the liberty to practice their Jewish court, which was known as, the Halakha courts, or the Beth Din. Paying the jizya, also means as a peace agreement, that people who have the intentions, to embrace Islam, will not be suppressed. The practical implementation of, the instruction of Allah to conduct military campaigns, can be observed from, the relation between the city-state of Medina, and the Eastern Roman Empire. Here is the picture of, the territory of Eastern Roman Empire, which is represented in, the red area. Whereas, the territory of the city-state of Medina, was represented by, a small blue dot, in the right down corner, of the screen. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, implemented this Islamic law, in the most appropriate way, humanly possible. This can be observed from the letter, issued by the Prophet to Heraclius, the Emperor of Eastern Roman Empire. First, let us see some of the letter. This is the actual picture, of the letter sent by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to Heraclius, the Roman Emperor. The letter stated as follows. Quote, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficial. From Muhammad, the worshipper and the messenger of Allah, to Heraclius, the great of the Romans. Peace be upon he, who follows the guidance. Furthermore, I invite you with the invitation of peace. If you submit, then you will find safety. And Allah will double your reward. If you turn away, you will bear the aliens' sins. 
End quote. As can be understood from the letter, the most important thing here, is not to conquer the Eastern Roman Empire. However, it was the opportunity to make Islam, accessible to the people of Arians, which constitute the majority of the population. The people of Arians, believed in the religion stipulated by, a priest named, Arius. The religion which, can be understood as, a branch of Christianity. According to Islam, the people of Arians, also had the rights to enjoy, the religion of Islam, and the law of Islam. Impeding the people of Arians, to gain access to Islam, is a violation of human rights. Unfortunately, Heraclius, the Roman Emperor, did not allow his subjects, to access Islam. Therefore, the Eastern Roman Empire, was given the following two options. Option number one. The Eastern Roman Empire, has to pay Jizya, or protection fee, to the city-state of Medina. Or. Option number two. The Eastern Roman Empire, has to face the military force, sent from the city-state of Medina, in the battlefield. Obviously, the Eastern Roman Empire, did not have any intention whatsoever, to pay any Jizya, or annual protection fee, to the city-state of Medina. That means, option number two. Thus, a military collision between, the Islamic city-state of Medina, against the Eastern Roman Empire, was inevitable. On top of that, in this military conflict, the Romans were assisted by, the Ghassanid vessel state. The battle broke, near the village of Mutar, east of the Jordan River, in the land of Syria. Hence, the battle became known as, the Battle of Mutar. This is the satellite map, of modern-day Arabia. The village of Mutar, was represented in, a red dot. The city of Medina, was represented in, a blue dot. The closest distance between, Mutar village and Medina city, was around, 1000 kilometers. In the Battle of Mutar, the military force of Islam, was led by four companions of the Prophet, may Allah be pleased with them, while the Prophet stayed in the city of Medina, managing governmental affairs. They were? 1. Zayd ibn Haritha. 2. Jafar ibn Abi Talib. 3. Abdallah ibn Rawaha. 4. Khalid ibn Walid. They fought bravely, against the military force of Eastern Roman Empire. The Romans were assisted by Ghassanid vassal states. Whereas, the military force of the Muslims, mainly came from the city-state of Medina, assisted by several neighboring Arab tribes. Obviously, the Muslim force was vastly outnumbered. In one source, it was stated that, the Muslim was outnumbered 1 to 30, in another source, 1 to 60. This was not only due to the fact that, the Eastern Roman Empire had much larger army. But, the Romans were also assisted by their vassal states. However, against all odd, they managed to avoid, a total defeat. The Battle of Mutar, was one instance of, the implementation of Islamic military campaign. Another example, can be observed in, the case of Egypt. At that time, Egypt was a province of, Eastern Roman Empire. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also sent similar invitation letter, to the ruler of Egypt, who was known as, al makorkis This is the letter from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the ruler of Egypt, known as, the al makorkis We can still clearly see the signature, or the stamp of Prophet Muhammad. The letter stated as follows. Quote. If you decline, then, the sins of the Copts, is on you. End quote. The people of Copts, believed in the religion of Coptic Christianity. The religion which, can be understood as, a branch of Christianity. According to Islam, the people of Copts, also had the rights to enjoy, 
the religion of Islam, and the law of Islam. Impeding the people of Copts to gain access to Islam is a violation of human rights. Unfortunately, the ruler of Egypt, al makorkis did not allow his subjects to access Islam. Eventually, at the end, the land of Syria, Jerusalem, and Egypt, which had been the territory of Eastern Roman Empire, were completely conquered during the era of Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, who was the second caliph, or the second successor of the Prophet. In this picture, the territory is represented by the area in green. This happened twelve years after the demise of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The remaining territory of the Eastern Roman Empire was shown by the area in red. The same type of military campaign was also waged against the Persian Empire. The military campaigning against the Persian Empire was initiated by Prophet Muhammad himself. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sent an Islamic invitation letter to the leader of the Persian Empire. The Persian leader at that time was known as Khosrow II or Khosrow Parviz, which linguistically means Khosrow the Victorious. It was reported that, upon receiving the Islamic invitation letter sent by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Persian leader angrily torn the letter into pieces. Thus, the original copy of the letter was nowhere to be found. However, the contents of letter was still available until today. The contents was similar with that which was sent to the Roman Emperor. Quote, if you refuse to accept Islam, you will be responsible for the sins of the people of Magian. End quote. It can be understood from the letter that if the Persian leader refused to let the religion and the law Islam entering the Persian land, the people of Magians will have no access to get benefit from Islam. The Magians are people who embraced the religion of Zoroaster, who constitute the majority of the Persian population. In the religion of Islam, impeding the people to gain access to Islam is a violation to the human rights. Unfortunately, the leader of Persian Empire refused to let his subjects to gain access to Islam. Therefore, the Islamic city-state of Medina had to consider the military option. The Islamic military campaign against the Persian Empire was started during the era of Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. Abu Bakr was the first caliph, or the first successor to Prophet Muhammad, after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Islamic military campaign against the Persian Empire was launched by Abu Bakr, despite the fact that the Muslim force within the Arabia Peninsula was not fully consolidated. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, died within two years after the demise of the Prophet. Nonetheless, against all odds, the Persian Empire could be fully conquered during the era of Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, who was the second caliph or the second successor of the Prophet. During the era of the second caliph, the region of Arabian Peninsula, Persia, Syria, Egypt, and a part of North Africa were fully consolidated. This happened twelve years after the demise of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Not every nation or tribe within the Arabia Peninsula rejected Islam. Some of them willingly embraced the religion of Islam and the law of Islam. Most of the nations who willingly accepted Islam were tribal nations of Arabia. Some of them refused Islam but willingly paid the jizya or the annual service fee for the military protection instead. For example, this can be observed in the case of the province of Bahrain. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also sent an invitation letter to the governor of Bahrain. His name was Munzir ibn Sawa al-Tamimi. This is the letter Prophet Muhammad sent to the governor of Bahrain. We can still clearly see the signature 
or the stamp of Prophet Muhammad. The letter stated as follows. Quote. I forgive the offenses, of the offenders. Therefore, you may also forgive the people of Bahrain. Whoever want to continue in their Jewish or Magian faith, should be made to pay Jaziah. End quote. The population of Bahrain were largely Arabs. Their governor, Munzir ibn Sawa al-Tamimi, was also Arab. However, the province of Bahrain was, under heavy influence of, the Persian Empire. Hence, upon receiving the letter from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a portion of the population of Bahrain, refused down Islam, but willingly paid the jizya, or the annual protection fee. The Religious Freedom in Islamic Civilization The fact that Islam did not force people to embrace the religion, can be found in the three following examples. 1. The Iberian Peninsula, or modern-day Spain and Portugal. 2. The Indian Subcontinent. 3. The Indonesian Archipelago. The first example is, the Iberian Peninsula, or modern-day Spain, and Portugal. The Muslims conquered the Iberian Peninsula, modern days Spain and Portugal, for over 800 years. That is from the 7th century, to the 15th century. However, during those periods, the Muslims were still a minority. The second example is, the Indian subcontinent. The Muslims conquered large portion of Indian subcontinent, for over 1000 years. That is from the 7th century, to the 18th century. Yet, during those periods, the Muslims were still a minority. The third example is, Indonesian archipelago. Today, Indonesia became the largest Muslim population, on the face of the earth. The Indonesian accepted Islam, voluntarily. Not a single Muslim soldier was ever sent, to convert the majority of Indonesians, who were Hindu or Buddha, into Islam. This is the result, if Islam is implemented correctly. This was not the work of a warlord. Summary The followings can be understood, from the discussion above. 1. By definition, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a warlord. The characteristics and the actions of, Prophet Muhammad, did not fit the definition of a warlord. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a head of the sovereign state. That state was, the Islamic city-state of Medina. The city-state of Medina had its own constitution, ahead of time of its counterparts. It was called, the Constitution of Medina, or the Chapter of Medina. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stipulated the Constitution himself. On the other hand, a warlord, does not have any sovereignty. Moreover, a warlord, does not have any capability, to stipulate Constitution. 2. Every human being, has the basic human rights, to enjoy the religion of Islam, and the law of Islam. Nevertheless, Islam does not force people, to embrace the religion. Islam only gives the freedom to choose the religion. 3. Impeding people, to gain access to Islam, is a violation against the human rights. Thereupon, Allah, the creator of this universe, gave Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the following options. A. To conduct an Islamic military campaign. Or. B. To demand the jizya, or the annual service fee, as a peace treaty, and military protection. Islam is the first religion, to determine the protection of, basic human rights, even in the battlefield. 
4. Only able and adult men, among the non-Muslims, have the obligation to pay jizya. Thus, all non-Muslims are exempt from participating in military service. This is because, participating in military service, is a part of religion of Islam. Islam does not impose religious activities to the non-Muslim. Community who pay the jizya have the liberty to implement their own laws and court. The non-Muslims also have the liberty to practice their own religion. 5. As the head of sovereign state, which is the Islamic city-state of Medina, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, conducted invitations to Islam, which guarantee basic human rights, to its counterpart states. Some of counterpart states are, the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Persian Empire. Inevitably, the invitations to Islam, were not honored. Therefore, the city-states of Medina, was forced to conduct military campaigns against, the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Persian Empire, in the same time. Eventually, during the era of, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, the second caliph or successor to the Prophet, all territory of Persian Empire, and a majority of the territory of Eastern Roman Empire, such as the Syria, Palestine, Egypt, and North Africa, were successfully consolidated. 6. Inviting the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Persian Empire, simultaneously, to the ideology of Islam, was not a work of a warlord. This was the work of Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him. This gave the city-state of Medina, at least, the same sovereignty as, the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Persian Empire, if not higher. Moreover, this gave Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the head of Medina, at least, the same authority with, the head of the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Persian Empire, if not higher. That is the video for this episode. Allah knows best about what is right. If you want more of these video, please subscribe and push the like button and the notification button. Please support our channel by buying our books shown in the description below. Please support our effort through Patreon and PayPal. Please follow us on Twitter. The links are provided in the description below. Share this video with your friends and family. Please tell us your opinion about the video in the comment section below. To learn about Islam systematically, please buy our books or visit our website. Further information can be found in our books. Our books can be obtained in both electronic medium and as printing books. You can also present the book as gifts for your beloved ones. Thank you very much for watching. And peace be upon those who follow the guidance.